you're gonna look at my terrible drawings and you're gonna like it, so deal with it. All right, people, let's get into it. I am Garrett, and today we're gonna to be talking about the line. This is a phrase that is used a lot in filmmaking, you know, whether you're on the line, staying behind the line, writing the line, crossing the line, crossing back over the line. The line is a phrase that used a lot. So we're gonna talk about what that is, how it works, and how to best use it in filmmaking. It's also known as the 180 degree rule. Now, traditionally, this is a rule that once you get it, it's really easy to understand, but it's something that is a little difficult to explain. So we're going to rely on my lovely drawing skills. You're welcome. The 180 degree rule in its simplest form means that when we have our camera placed in a location, there is going to be an imaginary line that exists in our scene. And our camera can only shoot on one half of that line. If a circle is 360 degrees, you cut that in half, you have 180 degrees. That is the 180 degree rule. To give you an example, this is a top down view. We have two actors here, okay? So these are their heads, these are their shoulders. They are not propeller blades. Those are people, we're looking top down, deal with it, okay? So we have two people talking in our scene and let's say that our opening shot is going to be kind of a wide master shot here where we have kind of our camera establishing our position, okay? So we have our camera here, it's pointed this direction, we're looking at both of our people, they're looking at each other having a conversation. Now that we have placed our camera in this space, this is where we then have to create our imaginary line, dividing our scene in half and only shooting on one half of it. So for this, just to keep it simple in our first example here, I'm going to then draw this imaginary line kind of right down the middle. I told you my drawing skills are fantastic. Pretend that's a straight line here. And this is now the line. The 180 degree rule states that this camera can be anywhere in the scene that it wants as long as it is on one side of the line. The reason for that is spatial continuity. The camera is the only thing our audience can see our film through, right? That is the angle at which they're going to see things. Anything that the camera doesn't capture, the audience doesn't see, and anything that the camera does capture, the audience does see. Now, for this, we have one person here on the left and we have one person here on the right. In order to maintain that spatial continuity for our audience to understand that this is where this person is and this is where this person is, we have to stay on this side of the line. So I'll give you another example. Let's say that we're going to then shoot two over the shoulder shots. Okay, so here we are, we set up a camera here. We are here and that's our first OTS going this way. And then we have another camera set up here like this facing this way, and that's our second OTS going that way, okay? Again, we're all on the proper side of the line. What this is going to do, I'll draw a couple of terrible little boxes here real quick here so we can see. So I have my three very symmetrical boxes here. Our first shot here, again, would look something like this to where we're gonna have two people in my frame looking at each other like that, okay? We'll draw a little eyeball so you can see they're looking at each other, fantastic. This shot here would then be an over the shoulder shot where we would have kind of the head and the shoulder of one character and then we would be looking at the second character kind of like that. And then this over the shoulder shot would be the reverse of that where we would have our subject here and our other person facing and looking at them this way, right? Now with these three shots, we have spatial continuity. I can look at this, I can see this and I can see this and I know exactly where all of my people are in a given scene. If I cross the line, right, where if let's just say this camera then comes and is over here, right? So then hold on, let's draw this real fast here. So now I have this camera cross this line, right? So then this angle changes. If I frame this up, this shot now looks like this. Do you notice a problem? When I cross that line, now I'm shooting over this shoulder back this way, and the framing between my second and third shot is now identical, even though the people are going to be flopped, 
right? So like if this is subject one and this is subject two, I know that this is subject one, this is subject two, but then now this would be subject two and that would be subject one, right? Over here, it makes sense. We have one and two, one and two, but now that this framing is the same as this framing, but my people are just flipped, all of a sudden, all of my visual continuity is ruined, right? That's why we stay on one side of the line. By staying on one side, we keep all of our visual continuity. Our audience knows exactly where everybody is supposed to be and everything feels the way that it should. Whereas if we break that, all of a sudden people are now not in the right places for the space that they're in, and we've really just confused the hell out of our audience. The good news is, is that you're not locked into this line for the entirety of your scene, should you want to reset the line. Resetting the line is simple. You can break this line and reset it as long as the camera itself breaks that line. And this is what I mean. If we cut from this shot to this shot, right? We completely remove this guy. We now have this, that's a problem. But if the camera physically moves, right, whether it's a slide or a track, however you wanna do it, and the audience starts with a shot on the correct side and then it slowly moves over to this new side, the audience has spatial continuity because we knew where everybody was and now having that move happen in frame where the audience can see it, they have now reset the line. Now that the line is reset, I can then put this line wherever I want and now have a new line that I have to stay on one half of. We'll do this another example just real quick here. We'll have three people now. They're standing like this. They're all facing each other. That dude has weirdly small shoulders. Like that, okay? So now we have three people. They're all facing each other. And I now have set my camera up here in my master establishing shot like that, like so. Then conceivably I can put my line wherever I want, uh, but for the sake of this, we'll then put the line kind of right down the middle of the circle like that, okay? So this is my line, I have to stay on one half of that line. So I've got my three people, they're all in a standoff, uh, they're all pointing at each other and we've started over here. Now, if I wanna come over here and shoot, I can, but if I just jump over there, again, we're gonna have that same framing problem where everybody now is all of a sudden in each other's spaces. So you see this happen a lot in Westerns specifically, especially in like things like duels to where, you know, you can have this shot, you can set up your over the shoulder shots, you can do all of that stuff, but then by getting the camera and slowly crossing over from one side of the line to the other, we can now reset the line, have a new line, and then let's just say we go this way with it, and then for the second half of our scene, we can have an entirely new line while still maintaining spatial continuity. When storyboarding, when setting up our shots, when thinking about how we want our scenes to look and feel, making sure that we set a line, that we stay on one side of the line, that we cross the line only when we do it in camera, otherwise we respect the line, even if we're writing right on that line, is gonna make sure that our audience fully understands the world that we're building for them. Kind of a headier thing today, but I hope you found it helpful. If you did, do me a favor, give this video a like. If you wanna see more stuff like this, comment down below, let me know what you wanna see, and be sure to subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next episode.